Looks like you guys get a little midweek twin turbo treat. Alright everybody, thanks for tuning in. Sorry I couldn't get you a video this weekend, but I did have to work. Fortunately, we've got a little bit of daylight left, and here's the deal guys. We are so close to getting this twin turbo setup done and getting this car fired up that, uh, you know, even though we've only got a couple hours tonight, I still want to go over there and try to get some of the small stuff done. Uh, you know some of the small stuff that you might not see on other channels but I just want to I just want to go ahead and get all that done running the vacuum lines uh, I'm trying to think of everything off the top of my head guys but uh, basically we're gonna go over to Brad's of what time we got left today um, I don't know how far along he is with the welding uh, I hope he's you know getting pretty close but maybe we'll get that finished up tonight get some vacuum lines run and start assembling the turbo kit because it's pretty much done at this point. Also, I was gonna kinda fill you guys in on what happened to the China Vet here. So, the China Vet did have an accident in a parking lot. Uh, best we can figure, it was at my wife's work. Uh, she was the only one that had driven the car, but somebody actually hit the car on this side. It tore a hole in the bumper, busted that corner marker, uh, corner marker light, and if you remember before, we used to have the Z06 vents in the bumper here. We no longer have those. So I'm just gonna kinda, I took a little clip when I dropped it off at the body shop to have it fixed just so I could kinda show you guys the damage. Um, you know, it wasn't major damage, but it was major enough we had to get the front bumper and a couple other things replaced. So here's that. So you can see from the footage, you know, we this whole part of the bumper was ripped open here. Um, we did take this, get it fixed. I'm gonna be honest, guys, I'm probably going to be taking this back and having them work on it a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm not real happy with the paint. Uh, we got a lot of little fish eyes and bubbles in the paint that I'm really not happy with. I didn't even really notice it until I got it home and got it out of the light, if that makes sense. But uh, but yeah, guys, we we've got we got quite a few defects in the paint uh, all across the front bumper here. The paint does not quite match either, and I kind of expected that because let's face it, you know we got 20 year old paint on the rest of the car, and the bumper paint is uh, fresh and new. But anyway. I'm not going to dwell on that too much right now. I'm just going to say, you know, I am going to take it back to the shop and have them look over it because there are quite a few places in this paint here um, that I'm not real happy with. So, But let's throw that aside right now and get on with some happy stuff. Uh, before I load this stuff up for Brad's, I was just going to go over a few things with you. One of the things I was going to go over with was the heat blankets. So you guys might remember, well, those of you who've been around a while on Project Steppenwolf, we used some eBay turbo blankets and, uh, or well, one, because we only had one turbo on Steppenwolf. Um, I had no problem with it, guys. And, you know, you can go back and watch my video, how much does it cost to turbo an LS? And there's links, you know, to that in it. But a lot of you said that you had trouble with those, that they fell apart after some time, which, I mean, they all do, to be honest with you. But I didn't have any issues, but I thought I might try something a little different this time. So I ordered these, and, you know, these were only, I think, $25 or $30 a piece. Uh, I'm not even sure what the name of this is. It's like Sport Ninwow or something. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, this is what we got. It's got, you know nice packaging box here uh, comes in the bag it's got the little tag on here that says ninwow or whatever it says I, I can't really read it but uh, anyway you know it's it's got like several layers of protection there so we're gonna try these out this time and see how these do the old turbo blanket that we used on Steppenwolf you know we only had the truck for probably about a year 
after we turbocharged it so we really don't know how well that held up and the guy that we sold the turbo kit to um yeah dustin if you're watching <laughs> Uh, he never never really did anything with the turbo kit as far as I know he's still waiting to put it on his truck so uh, we'll definitely get to see how long these hold up though uh, also for my exhaust gaskets I like these molly multi-layered steel gaskets sorry guys the pollen's getting to me uh, so I got a fresh set of those to put on and then you know we've got all of our other gaskets because up until now we've been doing mock-up without the gaskets so I'm taking all those over there tonight. I'm really hoping, you know, we can get some of this put together. Uh, I got some hose for the PVC system. Uh, I'll go over that, you know, when we do it. But basically, for now, uh, we're just gonna we're gonna go back to a vented catch can, the one that's on there. We're gonna put the uh, vented breather back on it, and we're just gonna run both our valve covers to it right now. In the future, we will do a larger, either a large single catch can with dash 10 lines to it, or um, we may just do two small catch cans, you know, a separate one for each side with dash 10 lines. But this is what we're doing for now, just to get it going. And then we've got some quarter inch fuel hose. That is temporary. We're gonna be using that for now to hook up our, uh, our turbo to our waste gates that's only going to last about a week guys because i got a surprise coming with that we're going to redo all that with the boost controller and everything later on uh this is just to get the thing fired up so i doubt we're going to get it fired up tonight i'm hoping we will definitely get it fired up this weekend but for now uh, i'm going to load all this stuff up in the truck and head over to brad's so real quick back on the whole china vet thing guys look this is why i don't like having nice cars okay <laughs> you guys know me you know i've usually got you know the old muscle car or you know the old 80s shit box and and this is why because if any of my other vehicles if this avalanche if you know the white camaro chaos theory uh the dr nova i probably i probably wouldn't even worry uh, about all the trash in the paint and stuff like that if I would have got one of those cars back like that But the fact of the matter is guys, uh, you know the China vet as much as I make fun of it um, I did pay a lot of money for it. I'm still paying for it and it is a nice car and You know, it's a Corvette so I Don't know guys. It's like, you know, I just I expect I expect it to not be perfect I know it's not going to be perfect, but, um, you know, the paint match, it's, it's really not even close. I mean, when I, when the light hit it from the side, I was like, wow, it almost looks like two totally different colors. And, uh, and like I said, there's all kinds of trash in the paint in that front bumper. I don't know anything about paint and body work. I don't claim to, um, but you know it would have been nice if maybe they could have blended the paint where the color difference wasn't as noticeable uh instead of just leaving it right there at the seam of the front bumper and you know i don't know if there's a way to uh wet sand and buff or whatever to get rid of some of the trash you know the trashy spots in the paint or uh i mean i i really don't know how to do any of that guys but what i do know is i'm not happy with it and you will note that I have not mentioned the name of the body shop, and that's because I don't like to put people on blast, you know? And I understand that this body shop is probably, you know, they're just cranking cars out. They mainly do insurance work. It's not like it's some, you know, big high dollar body shop that does, you know, custom $30,000 paint jobs or something like that. But I do expect it to at least, at least be, OEM quality uh, you know when when a car gets repaired especially for the amount of money I paid a I'll just go ahead and tell you guys I had to pay a $500 deductible uh, but it was $2,200 to replace that bumper um, the emblem uh, the one light and to paint it so for that kind of money yeah I, I kind of expect there not to be a bunch of trash in the paint and I expect some blending to be done to where, you know, the 
the shift between the 20 year old paint and the new paint isn't as noticeable so uh the the bad thing about it is you guys know i'm always busy uh it's it's gonna it's just a real pain in the neck uh the body shop is not right next to my house so it's it's just kind of a pain to take the car back but uh, I will say that my rep at the body shop seemed like a really good guy and seemed like he was trying to treat me good and everything. So, um, again, I'm not going to put the body shop on blast. Uh, I'm just going to see how they handle the situation, uh, you know, see if they can do something to make me a little more happy with it. And, uh, again, this is why I hate having nice cars because I hate being like this, guys. I really do. I mean, you know, most of my cars, like this Avalanche and, uh, you know, Chaos Theory and the DR Nova's got tons of dents and, you know, rust in it. I hope to one day remedy that. But point is, most of my other cars are pretty, pretty rough, pretty beat up. And, you know, that doesn't really bother me. But uh, the China Vet, especially since the ultimate, you know, plan with that car is it is going to be Tracy's car. And, uh, you know, I think. I got a top-notch wife. I think she, you know, deserves to be driving in at least as good a car as I can give her, right? So, yeah, we'll get that. We'll get that situation all figured out. Uh, I'm probably not. I'm not going to make a huge deal about it here on the channel because, I mean, it's you know, it's paint and body work. It was a hit and run by somebody in the parking lot, and um, I mean, there's really not much I can do about it, and I really don't think it makes for exciting content. So. Uh, please don't ask me who the body shop is. Don't be asking me to slam people because I'm not going to do it. I mean, unless I take the car back and they're just like, fuck you, deal with it. Yeah, then I'll probably put them on blast. <laughs> but, but guys, I'm not going to run them into the ground just because, you know, maybe they were in a hurry and, and didn't get it done proficiently, you know. Hopefully they'll work with me. But anyway, back on the task at hand, uh, let's get some turbo stuff buttoned up. Here you go, guys. Got a 6.0 and a 4L80 in this sucker right here. Only 452,000 miles. We'll take, we'll take 3,200 for it. <laughs> What's up, Bradamus? Man, man. Bradamus Bellamus. I think I'm going to cut this back off. We're playing games, man. All right. Don't I'll be just, playing no games. And it's hot, but... You keep playing games, I'm going to stop calling you Brad, start calling you Milton Bradley. Um, <laughs> that's pretty good ways back in there on that top side. Oh, you already burned in the flange there. Yeah. But as far as... Look how much you pipe you're cutting off on the bottom. Oh yeah, there's a lot in there. But I think we need to bring it back out. Cut it off. So what little bit I have welded on that, I gotta cut out. Is it that? Wow, that is hot. It's yeah. almost like somebody just told me that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost like it went one in and out the other, huh? You have that. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can even see that. I'm gonna grab that sugar out there anyway. Sugar is sweet. So what he's talking about, guys, is we and and I'm sitting here. I'm gonna think about it real quick because the, depth of it. the yeah, like this pipe is actually all the way back to about right here. Well, on the yeah, on, on the, the top. I don't know about the bottom. Yeah, the, I don't think the bottom's that. Yeah, the bottom looks fine. So on the top up here, it's pretty far back into the pipe. And I'm sitting here trying to decide if it's going to be a flow restriction or if we should just say fuck it and burn it in. I think you're probably right. I mean, it's a step. But this one over here is good to go, right? No. That's I actually thought, the one that we was originally going to take apart. Oh, yeah. This is the mm -hmm. uh, driver's side here. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. This one's way side. back in there. That's the passenger side. This one? Yeah. No, this is the driver's side. Yeah, it is. Yeah, that's the driver's side. Or, yeah, passenger side. I'm sorry. I'm all right. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. You need to leave that. No, <laughs> no, I'll leave that, I'll leave that in there. 
I don't care, man. They know I'm an idiot. <laughs> I like to reinforce it from it time to time. I don't... I'm not sure that's such a big deal, man. I'm not sure that it is. Either. Because the, the way the primaries come in, it's like they're going... They're aimed down anyway. I mean, it might cause a little bit of reversion or whatever, but... Well, it's going to cause turbulence. Yeah. This side, I mean, this part of it's perfect. It's just up there. That sucks. So we're going to have to cut both of them. But you got them marked. I mean, we ought to be able to get them right yeah, back where they good. go. I got to get the bad luck garage decal in it here. <laughs> So here's what's going on with the vacuum line, guys. I did have this going from our sealed catch can up here to this nipple. We're gonna block this nipple off with a vacuum uh, vacuum cap. And you know, we'll probably, if it's not tight enough, I'll go ahead and stick a hose clamp on it. And then we're gonna run a new line from here. It's gonna go around and go to that nipple on the valve cover on that side and go into our catch can and then this one of course already goes into the catch can then we're going to take our plug out that seals it and screw our filter back into it so it'll be venting both sides you know both valve covers and we'll have to we'll have to plug this guy right here too and that should have us pretty good on that uh, like I said, this really isn't big enough, and these lines are not going to be big enough. It's going to have to work for now. Um, eventually, I'll either be getting one large catch can and probably mounting it back here and routing dash 10 hoses. I don't know if we're going to weld on bungs or what we're going to do, um, but I'll be routing them to a big catch can, most likely over here. Or plan B is I may just have two small catch cans like this one on each side and each one just vents one valve cover through dash 10 uh, dash 10 lines so that's what we got going on uh, also we're going to go ahead and take our our proton nitrous kit off i'm going to leave the main nitrous line and the purge because we are still going to have nitrous on here um what I'm going to do is we're just going to have a single dry shot. So I'm just going to need the one solenoid. And for now, that's going to be one of the mainline solenoids that you guys have seen me use on other cars uh, because that's what I have laying around. So actually, uh, I've got two more of these purge solenoids, these Nitrous Express. If you guys don't know, these purge solenoids are the same solenoids they use in their 125 horsepower kits. So I may just use one of those just because it looks nicer and uh yeah I'm, i haven't quite decided how we're going to use the nitrous yet if we're going to use it to spool the turbos or if we're going to use it just to launch with like maybe launch on a hundred shot uh until i can get a uh you know a transmission with a trans brake I, I don't know guys it all depends on how this thing acts you know if i can build some boost on the foot brake and i may be able to because you know this converter is pretty sloppy so We'll just have to wait and see. So we got that squared away. We got our original line was going here. We capped off this line and this line because this is gonna be under boost. We went ahead and put some, some uh, fuel injection hose clamps on there, you know, so those don't blow off under boost. And then we ran our new line. It goes around here, loops around the back of the engine and boom, right into the valve cover there. And then you'll notice I took our plug out and put our filter back on. It's not much of a filter, but it's gonna have to do for now. I also unplugged the nitrous kit that was on here, the proton kit, and I removed all of it. So we don't have the big bullhorn hanging out here anymore. Uh, the only thing that's still here is our purge, and I'm leaving that hooked up for two reasons. One, to block the line. And two, because as I already stated, we are going to put a single fogger, you know, just a, a single solenoid on here for a dry shot. Uh, not sure if I'm gonna, gonna try to get a plate to go on here or, you know, if I'm gonna plumb it into the, uh, the charge pipe, but that's not something I need to worry about at this particular point. 
So moving right along, I think the next thing I need to do is I actually need to take the housings off these turbos. Um, this nipple is pretty flat, but I'm gonna take a file and grind this down and I have to drill these and tap them for a 1 8 MPT so that I can screw one of these guys into each one of them. This will be our reference for the wastegate. Now, I think I said it earlier in the video, but we're gonna be doing something a little different down the road, but they're still gonna have they're still going to have to be tapped for 1 8 MPT, so I'm going to go ahead and get that done now. And we've already got these turbos clocked exactly the way we need them clocked, so before I take the housings off, I'm going to take and make me a couple marks going around so that when I put the housings back on, I can put them in the exact same orientation that I took them off in. Something else I'm going to go ahead and do since we're going to be doing final assembly soon is I'm going to go ahead and take our drain off and put our gaskets on because currently there's no gaskets for our drains there. So yeah, we'll get all this done in one shot and the turbos will be ready for final assembly. There we go, she's off and you can see all of our billet boy goodness here. Okay, so we got our trusty R bit for uh, doing 1 8 MPT holes and we got our 1 8 MPT tap. And we're just going to use a smaller bit here to drill a pilot hole. Need to make sure we get right in the center because we really, you can see by the fitting, we really don't have a whole lot of room to work with around this uh, this bung that's sticking up here. So I'm going to get this drilled and tapped and uh, get the other one drilled and tapped. And yeah, that's pretty much it. You guys have seen me drill and tap. 1 8 MPT holes before so as, far as the whole centered thing goes uh, I failed miserably on this one <laughs> it'll work though Okay, since I had the fittings to do it, I went ahead and remade our main oil line because I wanted to put a 45 on the end that goes down to the block there. So that's all done. And I went ahead and tightened our two oil lines that go to each turbo, tighten them up to our Y there. I'm gonna tighten that up to that line and crawl under here and attach that line to our oil feed that I showed you guys a couple videos ago and I'm trying to think I think that's pretty much it like you just saw the turbos are done uh, we got our boost reference T or our boost reference 90s screwed into those I went ahead I got the gaskets and the drains like I said I was going to so I think once I get the oil lines hooked up, all I really have left to do is uh, fill it back up with oil. I'm going to change the filter too since we had to drain the oil to tap the pan. Um, we're going to go ahead and yeah, fill it up with oil and I think that's about it guys. After that, uh, as soon as Brad finishes up welding, uh, what's taking so long with that is you know the manifolds were just tacked in a lot of spots but we had to actually take it apart and cut like the wastegate holes where they were tacked on we just mocked all that up so you know like i showed you guys before he's already got all the down pipes and everything welded uh he's just working on the manifolds and i believe i got everything else so it's yeah as soon as he gets done with the manifolds um which probably won't be tonight we're running out of time but um yeah hopefully by this weekend guys he'll have the manifolds done we'll have all this bolted back together and we can fire it up so our line's screwed down tight now and i went ahead and hung our uh, mls exhaust gaskets i went ahead and just hung them on my exhaust manifold studs there and guys that's why i keep telling you you know i i use these stainless studs they're only like 16 bucks on ebay uh, I've gave, given you guys so many links to these things, uh, but I use them on all my builds, and you know that's why it just makes things easy. You, you don't have to fumble with a gasket and trying to start a bolt. You just hang your gaskets on them, slip your manifolds on, and you know run the nuts up. So 
uh, that's done. One thing that did not work out, uh, even though we're going to have those uh, turbo blankets I showed you guys earlier right here, I still wanted to do heat sleeving on our, uh, on our upper radiator hose here. So I bought this three foot long piece from Thermal Zero and it ended up, so I was under the impression this upper hose was supposed to be like an inch and a quarter or something. So I ordered inch and a half sleeve and it's actually like the exact same size as the hose. So it's not gonna go over it. So we might use this for something else, wrapping fuel lines or something like that. Um, you know, at the back of the car where they come in. Actually, this that would be a damn good thing, uh, a damn good purpose for this. We'll probably use it when we run our new fuel lines with the Dash 10 and Dash 8. We'll probably run them through this back here since they'll be passing uh, pretty close to, to our uh, turbo header here. So, yep, we'll hold on to that. And what I'll probably do is order another one of these in two inch diameter and that'll be good enough to slip over our upper radiator hose here to kind of guard it from the heat of the turbos. Went ahead, got the intercooler mounted back solid, got our charge pipe mounted, blow off valve, our uh, intake air temp sensor mounted there. Bradley Bradamir! Is that color? I don't know if that color is coming through on the camera, all the purple and stuff. <laughs> Well guys, I guess everything was going a little too good tonight. So it was getting dark, like I said, didn't have a whole lot of time to go over there and work on it tonight. And just so you know, uh, Brad's house ain't right next door. I mean, it's, you know, it takes me about 30 minutes to get to his house. So anyway, <laughs> the last thing I wanted to do before I left Brad over there to his welding and stuff, um, I, I wanted to get my NTK wideband sensor out of uh, out of our old exhaust pipe here so <laughs> had a little problem guys the problem was the sensor was frozen up in the bung and what's so weird about that is i know good and dang well i caked this thing with anti-seize but for some reason it was froze up so i had to work it back and forth I had to get out a breaker bar and you know an o2 sensor socket here uh had to just keep spraying uh, what did i use here had to keep spraying this wd-40 uh rust penetrant spray on there work it forward back forward and back well i finally got it out but guess what the threads on this thing are completely destroyed i mean i don't know if you guys can see that how well that's focusing uh but the threads are just I mean, it destroyed them, guys. And these sensors aren't cheap either. These sensors, I believe, uh, this is the NTK sensor for use with Dominator or Holly HP. And, uh, yeah, these guys are almost $300 on their website. And as far as I know, there's not one off their website that you can buy. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> like I said, everything was going a little too smooth. We had to throw a wrench in the work somehow. What is, what's really so odd about this is as jacked up as the threads are on here, the threads in the bung that it was seized up in are perfect. Like they're perfectly fine. Just to show you how perfectly fine they are, I have an old O2 sensor here. And you can see, I mean, it threads right in with my hand. I mean, it's... <laughs> I don't know, guys. I don't understand that. I don't understand how I can pull... I don't understand how I can pull a sensor out, an O2 sensor out, and the threads be just completely jacked, but the threads in the bung that it was froze up in are perfect, like absolutely fine. And this is a mild steel bung. This is stainless exhaust, but I remember at the time uh, I didn't pre-order. I didn't have a stainless steel bung to go with it, so I actually had to go to an exhaust shop, and they just gave me a mild steel bung. So, uh, you know, it's not like it's a harder metal or something. I don't know. But anyway, uh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do here because, guys, uh, I do not have 300 bucks to drop on another NTK sensor. So here's what's most likely going to happen. I'm going to try to force this in to the new exhaust and 
if I cannot force this into the new exhaust, we're probably just going to drill a hole in the new exhaust, stick this guy in it, and freaking weld it. <laughs> like, just have Brad, you know, tack weld around it, try not to get it too damn hot. But, um, you know, and eventually it'll go out. I, I mean, all sensors eventually go out. Hopefully it's later rather than sooner. And uh, when it does, we'll deal with it then. Hopefully by then we'll be in a little bit better financial spot we won't be having to buy all these other parts and um yeah so that's my plan we're going to try to force it into the new exhaust if that doesn't work we're going to weld it to the new exhaust and just use it till it don't work anymore and uh and then deal with the problem then but that's all i got for you right now guys a uh, little more progress I am almost 100% certain we are going to get this thing started this weekend for the first time so really excited about that I'm gonna go ahead and cut this short so I can get this video out to you guys. Remember, if you wanna learn more about this car or any of the other project cars on the channel, they each have their own playlist on the channel. This car is the Chaos Theory playlist. So, you know, if you wanna know anything about the parts we're using or anything like that, go check out that playlist. Everything we've done to this car is covered step by step in that playlist. Thanks once again for watching. Now get out in the garage, get something done, and I'll see you next time here on Bad Luck Garage. Oh, you really fucky fuckied it up.